I kept looking for lenses and people would say, well, where's all the equipment? I want to demonstrate that actually the only piece of equipment it is is a piece of glass. David Hockney, our most celebrated living artist, reveals that 400 years before the invention of the photograph, artists were using simple cameras to capture stunningly realistic images on canvas. In a Hollywood studio, Hockney recreates masterpieces by Vermeer, Caravaggio and Van Eyck and demonstrates the secret techniques they use to create such vivid pictures. His extraordinary new evidence rewrites the story of some of the most famous paintings in the world. And the thrust looks good. All engines, all sources show the second stage is burning perfectly. Uh, Roger, Seven, you have a go. At least seven orbits. We thought we saw the 20th century on the news, film and elsewhere, better than any previous century. Although we could say we did not see it at all, a camera did. Up to 160 years ago, all images were made by artists. Chemicals replaced them. Today, photographs monopolize reality and truth as painting did in the past. No electricity involved in this picture. It's done purely optically and very clear and very beautiful. If we think what is in front of a camera is truth, verisimilitude, then those who command control over optical imagery have great power. Look at film, this, the press and advertising. But the real news is the power of the photographic image, including this one you see in front of you, is coming to an end. Exciting times are ahead. Here we are in the Hollywood Hills. Below are the lights of Studio City. We're all hard at work here making pictures in studios. I've been designing my own kind of Hollywood set. Here it's representing Renaissance Florence, Bruges and Ghent. They look brand new as they did 600 years ago. Because this is a set in Hollywood, this is Hollywood, too. Florence, Bruges, Ghent, and Hollywood. Four cities deeply involved in picture making. They were secretive then, and they're secretive today. On this set, and in other real places, I'm going to make experiments that I hope will begin to reveal secrets of how these pictures were made over the last 600 years. Think of these words, real, natural, photographic, true to life, what do we mean when we use these words? Why does this Byzantine Christ look like this Van Gogh? This all started with a hunch. Ingres, the great 19th century French portrait painter, uh, he had a show at the National Gallery in London with drawings made of English tourists on the Grand Tour going to Rome. They are beautiful drawings of 
rather wonderful looking characters, rather grand, all putting on their best clothes. I saw these drawings and I was struck by how small they really were. Uh, very, very small indeed. Uh, the scale I would draw ahead, you, you kind of draw what you call sight size, which is bigger than these drawings. So I noticed this incredible accuracy about them, almost a, a photographic quality. I blew some of them up on a Xerox machine just to look at them a bit better. And I started to notice that the lines reminded me of Andy Warhol. He would project a photograph and trace the line. The line has a traced look. And to my surprise, some of these had a line similar to that. So I thought, well, 18, 12, how, how could they be done? And on a hunch, I thought, I wonder if he used a camera lucida. It's not that easy to use, a little tricky. And in effect, you get a, what looks like a projection onto the piece of paper, and you can also see your own hand. Nobody else sees this projection. It's actually an illusion. What you do first is look at the face very carefully, then decide what characteristics to measure. Do you see what I mean? Once then you look, so long as you've made some relationships, especially between the eyes, the nose and mouth, that's what you would set up. In my studio, we pinned up hundreds of colour photocopies of paintings. Paintings which seemed to have an optical look and paintings that did not. Slowly, we got a kind of order. I put Northern Europe at the top and Southern Europe at the bottom. The wall was necessary because I could then sit back and scan centuries of Western painting. We worked back further and further, and finally we got to a date where beyond that, it is very different. And that date is approximately 1420. That date is when a big change occurs. That's been observed by every art historian. The explanations for it are everybody could suddenly draw better. Uh, really? Uh, not that good an explanation, not that rational, really. So we are focusing on this sudden change that happened. <laughs> 